Hello all. <coughs> Welcome to our schooly build. Come on in. Burgundy's on the oaks. Greasy every Sunday morning. Maple wood in the smoke. Like a spirit. Stop it! I can't help it! Why? I don't know! We've been trying to film this for like the last half an hour, so we're just going now. <laughs> Stick around for the bloopers. You'll see them at the end. <laughs> we can't. Um, hello everyone, welcome hello. back. We, here we are. <laughs> back again. So... We said we'd um, we, we said we'd show you the schoolie, so here we are. Welcome to Midnight Sun Schoolie. Welcome to our business. So I guess like the question people ask us the most is definitely why, <laughs> why a schoolie? Why, why a bus? Um, so a lot of you will be aware that we live in Finnish Lapland, in the Arctic Circle here in the Nordics, and it's as far as we're aware we think it's definitely the only one in the nordics and and kind of that was really important to us wasn't it was that we had something unique yeah quirky yeah different, different. yeah so we previously lived when we lived in the uk we actually lived on a narrow boat we lived on a 50 foot um canal boat on the grand union canal and so we'd kind of done these small spaces before hadn't we mm -hmm. and they really kind of spoke to us i guess we'd looked at small space living we've always kind of wanted to build a tiny home ourselves haven't we and yeah. or maybe you know kind of something we could travel in a little bit more potentially or we just we quite like cozy spaces so when we came across the idea for for a school bus we kind of ran with it didn't we we made the decision quite quickly and went with yeah. it um so i guess do you want to tell these guys a little bit about the bus yeah, so um, we started out looking at buses um, in the States and we managed to find a supplier who had a, a great selection of buses and um, there's quite a large turnover of American school buses um, because they have to, I guess, update them for, for, for regulation purposes. Um, so we managed to stumble across a supplier and we found this International CE300 which originally would seat up to, I think, 72 children yeah. or 48 adults. Um, so as you can see, it's quite a big space. Right, move out the way there. Because this the is a really long bus as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's approximately 40 feet long or about 12 and a half metres, um, depending on how you want to work. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a big vehicle, um, especially it's kind of the same length as an articulated lorry's trailer, which is, which is quite a decent size. And then, like, you're six foot tall, aren't you? So one yeah. of the other things that we wanted from a tiny space was for people to be able to move really freely in it. So, um, I mean, I guess if you take a, a quick stand up, you'll be able to show these guys. There you go. <laughs> All the headroom in the world. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not getting any better, is it? Cut. Um, we thought we'd come in the bedroom so that Steve can't break anything else. <laughs> can't be awesome all the time. Uh, so, I guess um, what I, I guess if you've come here because you're interested in a schooly build, which is probably slightly different to our previous vlog, then you're going to want to know a little bit about kind of how long this whole process took. So this is the obvious jump off point i guess for here mm -hmm. so we imported this bus in april from new york city actually it came from new york city and the way it got here was we it, it shipped via say bruges uh, yeah straight out of um new york to the bruges and then into hanko yeah in the south of finland where it was offloaded at the port and put onto a big trailer 
the biggest trailer I've ever seen in my life. So, like, <laughs> it was... A, we'll, we'll put a photograph in just now. But it was... You can see, it looks like a Tonka truck, mm -hmm. doesn't it? This trailer yeah. was enormous. This bus is huge. This trailer was enormous. We'd never seen anything like it. It was so funny to see the picture from the driver when it first arrived. We couldn't quite believe it. But anyway, so... Yeah, so the bus was transported up to us. And it arrived in April of 2021. Yeah. It actually arrived on my birthday, didn't Did. it? Yeah, which was really cool. Because um, it was delayed by, I think, four or five days at one point, wasn't yeah. it? So it was due to arrive with us a bit sooner. More an issue with the customs, I think. Yeah, so nothing like this had been imported into Finland for a long time. So we had to work really closely with the um, uh, Traficom. Uh, it was the, the port handling agent and the shipping agent and customs. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and it was kind of a... We were kind of flying by the seat of our pants a bit with it, really, because we didn't really know what we had to do and kind of they didn't really know what we had to do so it was a really we kind of had to work together with a lot of different agencies and i can honestly say that every single agency was really fantastic about it mm -hmm. and um genuinely quite excited i think to see it arrive because it's such an unusual thing to see here um as we said before in terms of accommodation we definitely think it's the only um american school bus accommodation in the nordics which if you're if you're watching from somewhere like america or canada or something or even the uk at this point um you might kind of think wow because there's you know there is there is more and more of these kind of um uh glamping conversion setups now isn't there and, yeah. and people living in them and traveling around and stuff so but as far as we know we're the only one here which is really cool mm -hmm. um so yeah so we so the bus arrived in the april and then we were still pretty because it's 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 march now it's the end of march now and i don't know if you guys can see you will do at some point we've still got a really heavy amount of snow here we tend to have snow in this area until um may time i guess you could say that the Middle snow would may, be at least. Mm. so we weren't able to do a huge amount with it straight away and we were still working pretty solidly on the house that we'd bought as well at that point making that um a bit safer for us because it, it needed a lot of work so we didn't really start this bus project until probably the summer time so maybe like july august yeah. time i think yeah. yeah so the first thing to think about was definitely the insulation wasn't it because the temperatures here in the winter can go down to as low as minus 30 degrees celsius if not colder actually i think the coldest we've had this winter has been somewhere around minus 30 34 I think. Yeah. Currently in the middle of the day we have minus something. Five I think. Yeah, 5. A good springtime temperature. Good minus springtime five. minus five in the sun. <laughs> <clears throat> so buses are not necessarily built to be slept in i think that's fair to say so the insulation was really important to us so that's kind of where you came in isn't it as an engineer to mm -hmm. kind of because the thing we were really conscious of when we when we started this project is that we wanted it to very much remain the feel of being on a bus and being in a quirky vehicle but at the same time have the comforts of a log cabin and to kind of sit a little more peacefully in the environment because this is a static unit it doesn't move it stays on our land um so we wanted it to feel very much kind of a mashup between the side of us that really wanted to do a small space conversion and wanted it to be in a really cool vehicle that we would love to, you know, to see ourselves. And also that kind of more authentic Lapland finish winter cabin yeah, vibe. Yeah, kind of log cabin interior vibe with, yeah. uh, with the bus feel. Yeah. So, what, so we had to kind of make a few adjustments we, we, I, in an ideal world we would have insulated it top to bottom and changed the windows out and things like mm. that but we primarily built it for summer use didn't we and it's had to yeah. kind of we've adapted it since for winter use and it's actually super like, it's so warm in here in the winter we have to open the doors um sometimes and guests have said that they're just like oh my god it's so hot um which is perfect for us isn't ideal, it because yeah. we'd rather people had to open doors than you know froze themselves silly so the well i'll let you talk about where everything that's kind of insulated and kind of how you went about that and yeah so the basic idea was to insulate the floor and then we've insulated the walls up to window level 
um, and then the interior walls are all insulated as well even though they they sit within the the, the cabin space um, so the insulation is I think 50 mil thick and then on top of that we've got an extra 25 mil thickness of wood all around so it's quite a almost three inches of additional insulation um, for the entire lower half of the structure and then um, to combat the cold we've got additional heating so we have a, a wood burning stove which lives in the front half and then each bunk has its own individual small heater so although it's a it's a really small space and um, so the really small heaters really help and then this back bedroom here has a has a heater behind on the wall which heats the space nicely and then in addition to the front heating there's a, a Dyson Dyson fan heater which does an amazing job it mm. circulates the air so it takes um, takes the air from behind itself and basically pulls it through heats it and distributes it throughout the cabin as well and that's a great great little addition that we put in when we decided that we were going to work this in winter as well yeah and it's also a great fan for the summer for moving cool air around so and then i made these thermal curtains didn't i so they seem mm -hmm. to have done a really good job in the sleeping yeah. areas we've put quite a lot of these thermal curtains up for winter and that's made a massive difference mm -hmm. and i honestly was quite surprised how, how much of a difference it made because in terms of thermal curtains they don't feel i i imagined they would have to be really thick and really yeah, heavy yeah, and actually they're just kind of like a fleece yeah so they make a massive difference so if you are looking to kind of thermally insulate somewhere even if it's your own property and you're having kind of problems with drafts at windows and stuff then mm. these thermal curtains we can absolutely recommend can't we because they they brought they make a massive difference mm, yeah they brought the temperature up almost immediately didn't they yeah. so um so the actual project we've gone a little bit off piece here for for, for shock it happens. <laughs> the actual project realistically took us I think probably about four months yeah once you factor in the bathroom and things yeah so, yeah because yeah, we have a separate bathroom unit so one of the things that we kind of ummed and ahed over and we weren't too sure about was how many this would sleep so we do sleep five and um, we can sleep six but we tend to sleep six in the summer five in the winter just because we utilize one of the bunk spaces for luggage in the winter people that use us in the summer tend to be using we actually sorry i'm segueing but we live on an area of the edge of Olanka National Park, so we live just here on the start or finish, depending on which way you go, of the Carhunkieros Nature Trails. So that's like an 86 kilometre backcountry trail. I think it's, yeah, 82, and we'll put a link in the description for where that is. Oh yeah, good yeah. idea. So you can see a bit more about it, so, if you want. We're so professional. Yeah, um, fancy. So we, so we live there, and, and that's a really, it's probably one of the most famous hiking trails in Finland. It's certainly a really challenging trail mm -hmm. um people tend to take three to four days to achieve it fully don't they and they camp yeah. out in the back country a lot of people do it under the midnight sun so we do live in an area whereby in the summer months we don't actually get any darkness at all we live completely in daylight 24 7 so when people come and stay for that reason they tend to just have their rucksacks they don't need so much stuff so we have little rucksack kind of hooks and things and so we can sleep six in the summer can't we but mm -hmm. in the winter people tend to come from a little bit further afield they might stay with us a little bit longer and they tend to have bigger suitcases ski gear heavier boots things like that so that's why we we make that change between the seasons uh what was i talking about bathrooms oh yeah so the bathroom good point <laughs> so that was how so we, we kind of we weren't sure where we how many it would sleep but we wanted to be able to offer groups of hikers somewhere they could stay together. It's really difficult to find accommodation for kind of for larger groups and groups of six really struggle historically to find accommodation. And, and we found this ourselves because we, we travel with friends and, and their children, well, their child and, and stuff like that. So we know that it's quite difficult to always get in the same apartment or the same cabin or... So we decided that we would have a separate bathroom unit I guess people might be concerned over that given the winter temperatures and stuff but I can honestly say that everybody that has stayed with us has said it's a massive part of the adventure mm -hmm. and they really enjoy the the kind of the I, I don't this, know I don't know novelty quirkiness yeah difference the 
well, the, the outdoors adventure, I guess. Yes, it's yeah. Exploring something, a different way of doing things. Yeah. L lots of different reasons, I guess. Yeah, and we are glamping, aren't mm -hmm. we? That's the yeah. other thing, is that this is... Oh, I mean, I think very nice glamping, but we are glamping. So the bathroom unit is actually really close. It's immediately pretty much out of these mm -hmm. doors, so it's not that far away. But we'll um, we'll take you around there now. Let's go. I spread my wings and let go. Something stirring in my soul. I feel it again. Feel it again. Feel it again, feel it again Unlock the cage and free my heart This is where the journey starts Now it begins, now it begins Now it begins, now it begins This is gonna be a good day Okay, so we have a couple of options uh, for getting to the bathroom and one of them is out of the front door that we came into, so let's go for a walk. So as you can see we've got the forest immediately outside and then we've got a nice little fire pit area. Um, currently covered in snow because we've recently had some quite heavy snow but as you see we've got a barbecue as well um, so you can enjoy the original bus seating barbecue and if you listen carefully we've actually got some birds singing in the background which because it's spring is quite a nice thing let's go to the bathroom like we say, the first option is to come out of the main door then the bathroom is here behind the bus with the crunch of the snow not only that, we can also come out this way So yeah, welcome to the bathroom pod. I'll let you guys go and have a look. So one of the things that we were really conscious of was making this as kind of the, gl the glamorous side of glamping as we possibly could. I think it's really important that if people are having a nice break that they feel fresh and clean and relaxed and a good bathroom kind of does that for everybody doesn't it so we were pretty stoked of how this turned out we, we built everything ourselves pretty much out here well the shower we built ourselves and the kind of water unit and all that sort of stuff so the, the shower is completely built by steve which i think is, is pretty impressive actually i really love the shower so we've got an overhead kind of massage shower which i think is beautiful and i've used myself and it's really powerful And again, we kind of wanted that um, indoor outdoor vibe, I guess, because one of the really cool things about showering here is you can actually shower with these doors open, which I think is pretty spectacular and probably one of my favorite things to do down here myself. Um, we went with, again, kind of a log cabin theme, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We wanted it to really match with the bus, but also be its own kind of standalone building. So this building has been insulated as well. So you can see kind of how thick the insulation is on this building. 
Um, and it's super warm out here as well, actually, isn't it? It's really, really it's warm. warm. Yeah. <laughs> And in terms of fittings, we went with this stone sink. I kind of fell in love with these stone sinks. And then um, the last thing was the, the toilet, really. So we, we actually chose an incinerator toilet. And I think at that time they were quite, they were fairly new to the market, weren't they? They were not something yeah, that people were using very often. We've been really pleased with it. It's um, It's quiet. It functions really well. It didn't require us to put in any kind of um, septic tank or yeah. special plumbing for waste. And also, we we looked at compost and toilets, but I think they're not necessarily they're not necessarily they can smell a little bit. Is the reality, and we didn't want that for our guests. We wanted it to be a really beautiful, clean, pleasant experience. Um, so, and we really wanted it to be as kind of ecologically sound as possible, didn't mm -hmm. we? And I guess people might balk at that now and be, but it runs on electric. How is that kind of, how is that ecologically sound? But one of the things we haven't discussed is that this entire bus, everything that runs on electric in this bus actually runs on hydroelectric. Yep. So, so when we picked our electricity supplier, we were trying to be as green as possible. And we, we found a supplier that only uses hydroelectric energy. So we've got a, a source from a renewable supply, which mm -hmm. is, um, that's quite important to us. Yep. Um, we can't obviously use solar full time, so because we, we don't have of, any daylight we, in the winter, we don't have enough winter <laughs> daylight to fulfil the power requirements that we have out here. Yeah, um, but yeah, the, the hydroelectric works all year round, and we get to have that little green tick as well, which is nice. Yeah, so. and I guess actually probably a good time for you to talk a little bit about how the bus is powered. Yeah, so well, everything's electric apart from the um, the wood burning stove. We've got a an electric fridge we've got an electric cooker all the electric heating which for when the the wood burner would be too much really so you can kind of control the climate a little bit easier in there you can just set the temperatures that you want and leave it to do its own thing um, also really important when you go out and about you don't want to come back to a freezing cold bus because mm -hmm. the fire's gone out so that little bit of electric heating does the keeps everything up to temperature whilst you're out so yeah that's good and then you kind of built it in terms of um it's like a hookup isn't it yeah so similar to a, a caravan connection only the slight difference here is that we have three phase electricity so it's just a couple of extra pins but everything is basically just running off a plug so the bus plugs in um, and then yeah if we want to drive it away we just disconnect it and move it to where we want to put it next which mm. is nice and easy so it's kind of similar to a caravan but not quite in that the the plumbing is fairly static but easily disconnected if we want to so yeah, that's, that's pretty good so i think that's something that we've we've not really touched on is it so in the in i, I guess with steve and i we're always thinking ahead i think aren't we in life we always mm -hmm. have been we're always thinking what's the next thing how do we adapt it what do we do and one of the things we'd really like to do is because the bus isn't registered for the road here so it's a it's a completely static unit it's never been on the road it's not kind of it's it's a i don't know how you'd describe it but it's effectively a building yes on wheels so the plan for the future hopefully is to have it road registered isn't it mm -hmm. so that we can move it because we'd really love to be able to take it out and go to some music festivals to showcase it around the nordics mm -hmm. um and just to travel in it we just really want to travel in it ourselves don't we and to go on awesome. kind of big mad road trips as well as having it as a business so i guess one of the things that we were conscious of was making sure that everything that we did to it could kind of be wrapped up put to one side and when we finally get to the point where we can register it and it becomes a, a moving vehicle again, that yeah. we can take it off and do that. So everything that we've done has kind of always been with this view that, fingers crossed in the future, Maybe. we'll get to go and do some really cool stuff yeah. with it. And then um, I suppose the other thing then to touch on is the water supply. Yeah, the water supply is effectively the same as our house. So we've dug a dug a line in the permanent line from our well to the bus and that's heated throughout the winter to stop it from freezing um, it also goes from the well to this bathroom so we have effectively two lines one to the bus one to the bathroom mm. they're heated when needed and then um, easily disconnected so if we need to disconnect them then we can disconnect the bus we can shut off the bathroom so maintenance wise we were aware that there could be issues in the winter so yeah. everything's kind of winter proofed future proofed 
um, and we can also make one redundant so we can shut off the bus supply or we can shut off the bathroom supply as required for maintenance purposes or anything like that so yeah it's uh, yeah. all of the water from the land which is brilliant and free and free <laughs> provided uh, yeah. once it's pumped out it's all <laughs> as much as we can handle which is lovely because mm. all of this will turn into water soon yeah all of this will work out all of this will eventually make its way down into the ground and filtered and go into our well which is nice yeah so i mean i guess that's it really isn't it i don't i think we've kind of covered most of i'm, I'm sorry it probably goes off on a tangent quite often you, you kind of you get used to that you're living through my brain unfortunately for you so it's gonna it's a trip it's a it's a ride and we'll just we'll go along together it's an adventure <laughs> <laughs> but if we did miss anything if there was anything that we missed anything that you'd like us to go back over and clarify anything where you thought well you could have done that differently you know have you thought about such and such then leave it in the comments let us know we can always come back and revisit things can't we we're Absolutely. happy to answer you know, any questions mm. um take any any suggestions on board potentially yeah um, yeah yeah we'd love to hear what you think yeah so i guess we'll we'll say goodbye mm-hmm we're going to go out on a bit of adventure later, so you'll see yeah. about that in another vlog. Absolutely. Um, we're going to go on a bit of a... Yeah, we've got an adventure planned for this afternoon, this evening. So we're kind of going to go and make a start on that shortly. Yep. Um, I'm very excited. If you like the Northern Lights, then look out for it. And yeah, please like, please subscribe, all of that kind of stuff that we need you to do in order for the channel to... To grow. To grow. Be and successful. Oh, it'd be lovely. If, can yeah. you imagine if it was successful? Can imagine. you imagine that? Oh my God. I can't even begin to imagine. <laughs> no, no, can I? Imagine, not, imagine not if people stage. actually started watching this absolute bunkum. <laughs> it's just drivel. But there we go. So anyway. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Still. Yeah. If you've made it this far, once again, thank you. And uh, Well done. Yeah. Maybe we'll see you again on the next one. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. They see me. I can't help it now. <laughs> they see me rolling. Hello. Hiya. So hello. Not a bad singer, too. We'll be cutting that whole thing. Oh. Yeah. Stop. They see me rolling. They. Well. I don't know what are they doing this time. I don't know. Okay. Really? Good luck. <laughs>